Good morning. Great to have you here this morning. And uh, today we are in red, and some of you are wearing red, uh, maybe on purpose, maybe on accident, I don't know. But uh, uh, today is red for a couple reasons. One is because today is Pentecost, uh, and so we celebrate that today. And then also we uh, have at the 1030 service uh, confirmation uh, today as well. So looking forward to, to that celebration. And uh, we welcome all of you and welcome those that are viewing online. If you're on Facebook, um, uh, maybe uh, put on, you know, say hello or something on there. I did that right before I came out here and said good morning. That's all I had time to, to put on there. But, uh, uh, but anyway, if you're new here, one of the things that we ask you to do is just to put new in the comments. And that way we kind of know uh, that we have got somebody new watching on there if you're willing to do that. Uh, but uh, so today we, uh, we talk about, we're we'll talking about Pentecost and what that's all about and the, the work of the, the Spirit. And so today is kind of the day we, we focus on that. Um, next week then is Trinity Sunday. And so we, uh, uh, then we talk about all, all three persons in the Trinity there. Um, but uh, one of the things I did with the, the sermon is I, I, I took the three verses that the, the confirmands for the 1030 service chose uh, for their confirmation verses and I'm, I'm focusing on those verses kind of in the context of, of Pentecost here. So uh, anyway, why don't we take a moment to stand up and you will greet from afar. And uh, so we're not shaking hands, but to acknowledge uh, your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ that are here this morning.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, throughout our lives, you have forgiven us for many sins. Some of those sins we need to confess every week. Be patient with us, and do not take your spirit from us. Grant us, us your, your ongoing, ongoing mercy, mercy and, and hear our prayer. prayer. For our failure to forgive others as we have been forgiven. Forgive us and change us, Lord. For taking offense at others easily. Forgive us, Lord. For carrying around bitterness and failing to pursue your qualities. Forgive us, Lord. And for all our sins of thought, word, and deed. Forgive us, Lord. God is merciful and patient. He's eager to forgive and to foster change. And because he loves you and that you are chosen to be in Christ, your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Turn the darkness into 
celebration of Pentecost. We pray that the powerful gifts of the Holy Spirit would rest on us. And the Spirit, your presence within us, would continue to bear abundant fruit, both in changed lives, movable faith, and powerful service as Jesus works through us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. For he lives and reigns with you, Father, and the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we hear God's word. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, verses 24 through 30. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him, and he took of the spirit that was on him and put the spirit on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldad and Medad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all of the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders returned to camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The epistle reading comes from the book of Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were saying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own t language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galilean? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the 11, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. 
In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The gospel reading comes from the book of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. Please stand. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated. Oh 
Please pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in your sight, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. My wife and I, and, uh, we've been doing a little landscaping around our, our house to kind of fix things up a little bit and, and clean it up. And we hauled uh, 35 bags of river rock uh, to the front area of the house. And I don't know if you've you know, moved bags of rock, but, but they're kind of heavy to move around. And so um, my son was helping, and so he had a, a really good idea. He went into the garage and got our wheelbarrow out and filled the wheelbarrow full of, of rocks to make it a lot easier. And you would think that'd make it a lot easier, right? That's assuming that the wheelbarrow has a tire that's full of air. And uh, the wheelbarrow uh, tire was, was uh, pretty flat, and so to try to move those rocks with a flat tire didn't work so well. And uh, it kind of reminds me, you know, when, you know, thinking about a tire filled with air, our reading uh, today uh, from, our, from Acts talks a lot about being filled with something else, being filled with the Spirit. And that's what we, we focus on uh, today, on, on Pentecost, is, is that, that work of the Spirit. And sometimes I feel like the, the Holy Spirit gets sort of the, the shaft, you know, because we, we don't seem to talk about the Spirit quite as much, you know. And, and so it, I'm glad we have Pentecost a day to say, hey, we're, you know, if we're not going to talk about the Holy Spirit much the rest of the year, we're gonna, we have one day set aside that, hey, if nothing else, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today. And then, of course, the week after that, it's almost like, you know, an apology of saying, well, okay, but we don't want to leave out the other two, so we're going to have Trinity Sunday right after that. I don't know if that's why we do that. Um, that's really not. But, uh, uh, but we, you know, we, we, we have the, the spirit there. You look at the creeds, the Apostles' Creed, and, you know, you have the Father, the Creator, you know, and talks about him being the creator of everything. You have this big paragraph on the Son and, and the work that he's done for us. And then, you know, then you get the spirit, you know, tacked on to the end there. And, and like in the Apostles' Creed, it, you know, it's just sort of the statement of, well, I believe in the Holy Spirit, you know, along with this other list of things that are loosely connected with the spirit. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, sometimes I don't think we, we focus enough on the Holy Spirit. And sometimes, you know, some churches maybe put too much emphasis on the spirit. But today, that, that's our focus. Uh, we're going to look at what the spirit is about. And in our gospel lesson, Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit there. And the way he talks about it, if you just take that by itself, almost makes it sound like the Holy Spirit is something new. Uh, do you get that impression when you see that reading uh, from Jesus there? And it makes it sound like, okay, you know, the, I'm going to give you uh, the Spirit, you know, and the time is coming uh, for that. Uh, but we know from the other readings that the Spirit isn't new. The Spirit has been around from the very beginning. Uh, we hear specifically in our Old Testament reading that Sarah read earlier from Numbers, and, and we hear about the Spirit there and how the Spirit was with Moses and, uh, uh, and the, uh, the elders there. Um, and then in, in Pentecost, we have this special giving of the Holy Spirit. And so why on Pentecost? You know, uh, what, what is Pentecost uh, all about? Uh, why, why that day? And Pentecost, uh, which you may or may not be familiar with, is the second major feast in the Jewish calendar. The first one being the Passover. And well, what happens on the Passover uh, right before this particular Pentecost? Well, you know, that's when Jesus and his disciples uh, had the Last Supper together. Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper. And uh, we have, you know, Jesus being sacrificed as that Passover lamb. And, and we have his resurrection. And so Pentecost takes place seven weeks after Passover. Uh, seven weeks, and then it begins the day after that. So you really have 50 days. Seven times seven, seven is 49, and then the, you, know, you have the, the day after that, the Pentecost uh, celebration begins. And so 50 days after that. And so what is that all about? Uh, one of the things that the people celebrated with Pentecost, uh, that, that the, Jew, the Jews celebrated, was the giving of the law by God to Moses at Mount Sinai. Uh, the, the, the giving of the covenant. And so that was part of that celebration, uh, the giving of God's word. And uh, that's a, a big part of, of what the spirit is involved in, is in God's word. Um, it's also uh, connected with uh, the, the Jews would, would have every seventh year, they would have a Sabbath year. But then after seven 
year, or after having seven Sabbath years, so after 49 years, on the 50th year, uh, that they would have this, uh, the, 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 the special uh, Sabbath year that they would celebrate um, every 50 years. And on that time, uh, some things would happen. If somebody had uh, lost some property for one reason or another, they would get that property back. If they had basically sold themselves into slavery because they were broke and that was the only way they could survive, then they were released uh, from that uh, from that commitment. And uh, they wouldn't do any uh, planting or harvesting that year. It was a year of rest. And, and so this was a, a special time uh, that they celebrated and a, a very uh, uh, fitting time for this special giving of the Holy Spirit um, in, in a very visible way. And again, it's not that the Spirit was something new, uh, but we see the Spirit doing something new uh, here. And we see the Spirit visibly at work in the apostles. Uh, you know, we have the visible, you know, that the, the, the talks about the tongues of fire and, and it, how they are preaching the gospel and everybody's hearing it in their own language. And so God is renewing this covenant. He's giving the, this new covenant that we have in Christ now that he has fulfilled that through his death and through his resurrection. And the apostles are proclaiming that message and sharing God's word, his new covenant, uh, as the spirit works through that. And we, we see the spirit at work throughout all of, of the Old Testament. Um, and uh, uh, we see that in, uh, in these different verses that I'm going to focus on the, uh, from these are verses that the, the compromands that will uh, be having uh, that service at 1030. Uh, these are the verses that they, that, they, they, that they picked. And so the first one is uh, Psalm 19, verse 14. And uh, if you want to read that with me, please. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Do those words sound familiar at all? Yeah. <laughs> Just heard those a little bit ago, right? That, that, that's a, a verse that I, I uh, quote uh, before I preach and uh, quite often. And I, I heard another pastor do that, and, and they said, yeah, I, I typically do that, and I, I like that. And so I started using that because it helps begin w with a right focus. And who wrote those words? I mean, granted, they came from the Spirit, right? You know, because the Spirit inspired all these words. Um, uh, but they were written by, by David. It's a Psalm of David is what uh, Psalm uh, 19 says there at the beginning. And of course, you know a little bit about King David and he had an interesting uh, history. Uh, King David was the youngest of, of eight brothers. And so usually there wasn't a whole lot of expectation of, of the youngest son. And yet he is the one that God chose to be anointed king by Samuel. Um, in place of Saul, who was not really being very obedient in, in his call as king. And, uh, you know, David, of course, as he's growing up, we have that confrontation with, with Goliath. And David uh, uh, defeats Goliath. And that's when Saul says, hey, why don't you <laughs> come in, in my palace here? And, uh, um, and he and uh, David and Jonathan become friends. And yet, it, it, as uh, David has the spirit working in him, uh, there's lots of success that he has. So much so that people started praising David and saying, wow, you know, uh, you know, Saul, he's killed his thousands, but David his ten thousands. And, you know, saying, wow, look what David is doing. How did Saul feel about that? Not too excited. And uh, sometimes when, when the spirit is at work in us, there's maybe may others that see that and say, yeah, I'm a little bit jealous of that, or I don't really like that. And so we don't always get a good reaction uh, from other people. And it got to the point where Saul decided he was going to assassinate David after trying a few other things to sort of reduce David's popularity or to maybe get him killed. Saul kind of went the more direct route and tried to have David assassinated. And, and so David was in hiding by himself. And uh, um, this was certainly a difficult time for David. Um, and yet other people started going into hiding with David, his brothers and, and others for various reasons to the point where David finally had about 400 men that were in hiding with him, uh, hiding from Saul. And God continued to have his spirit work through David uh, during the, this challenging time. Um, and, and the thing that strikes me with, with David's words here in Psalm 19 are a couple things. Uh, first of all, Psalm, Psalm 19 is focused on the word of God. We talked about Pentecost as the giving of that word and how the spirit works through that word. And that's what Psalm 19 is all about. It talks about uh, God's word and, and how 
uh, uh, the spirit works through that. And then at the end of that psalm, David starts talking about his, his own sin. He says, you know what, there's sins that I'm not even aware of. Uh, but then there's also those willful sins. And, and he confesses those sins before God. And he, he recognizes that, that where sin begins. You know, a lot of times we think of it as the actions that somebody does. But David recognizes in this verse here in Psalm 1914 that it begins in the heart. He says, may the words of my mouth, the, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. He wasn't pointing at Saul and saying, you know, look, look at what Saul's doing wrong. And Saul was doing a lot of things wrong, uh, even in the midst of those things. And he could have been pointing fingers. And, you know, and, and today we, we can look out at the world and see all kinds of evil out there. We can see all kinds of bad things that are happening. But this verse reminds us that we're not responsible for that. You know, that, 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 that there, there's a lot of things that are out there that are troublesome but it begins in our own heart and where we are at. And, and David recognizes that here. He says, in, in my mouth, in, in my heart, may that be acceptable in your sight. And then he reminds us of who Yahweh is, that he's our rock and our redeemer. In the midst of, of the, the, the turmoil that is out there, we have one thing that we can stand firm on, and that is our, our rock uh, on our God. And so the spirit continues to, to work through David during this time and remind him of who his redeemer is. And even though this is about a thousand years before Christ had come, David knew who his redeemer was. He knew that that Messiah was coming. He knew that, that God would, would save him, that he would give him forgiveness through Christ, through his death, through his resurrection. And even as you know, sin begins in the heart, so does the work of the spirit. We hear that from the words of Jesus in John 7 on how that's where the spirit begins to work on us. And so we continue to be connected to God's word. We continue to... Uh, to, to uh, uh, recognize that the spirit is in us. You know, I mentioned before about the, the tire on the wheelbarrow and, you know, being not filled with air. But, you know, there was some air in there, uh, but not very much. And so yesterday I, I got the, the tire filled up. And the, the word for spirit in the Hebrew is ruach, and the, the Greek is panoima. And that word not only means spirit, it also means wind or air. And, uh, uh, and, and so as we are filled with the spirit, um, it begins to, to change things. And it doesn't mean that we're going to have a lighter load, you know. It, you know but the, the, there's still the, the 35 bags of river rock for, for us to move, but when we're filled with the Spirit, we're able to handle those things a little bit better. Um, let's go on to the next verse here from Joshua 1.9, and it kind of builds on, on that idea that we talked about with David of, of, being, of God being our rock. Uh, Joshua 1.9, let's read this together. Have I not I commanded, commanded you, you, be strong, strong and courageous. courageous. Do, not Do not be afraid, be afraid or, discouraged, or discouraged, for the, the Lord, Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so here we have in the beginning of Joshua, where Joshua is taking command after Moses. Now before this, uh, Joshua was one of the 12 spies that were sent into Canaan. Uh, to see how, you know, what, what was going on there, because this was the promised land. This is the area where God had said, hey, th 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 this is where, this is the land that I've promised you. And so Moses sent these 12 spies to go check things out. And they all came back with the same report, basically. They said, yeah, it's a beautiful land flowing with milk and honey, but there's also a lot of powerful people there. The difference in the report were 10 of them said, yeah, these people are powerful. We just need to stay away from there. They're, they're, they're going to wipe us out if we try to take over this land as God is instructing us. Two came back, Caleb and Joshua, and said, yeah, these people are powerful, but our God is more powerful. And, and, uh, and so continuously, one of the things you see Joshua being reminded of is being strong and, and courageous. And uh, and, and that's an important thing because Joshua had, had some, some big challenges. You know, because he was faithful and he trusted during the time that they were spying on the land of Canaan, well, because of that, Caleb and Joshua were the only, only two to actually be able to go into that promised land. The others didn't trust, and God said, you know what? You're not going to trust. You're not going to go. And even though they trusted, there was still a big challenge there. That There were still powerful people there. And, and Joshua had a, a very tough task to lead these armies into this promised land. And it was not an easy thing. And, and so Joshua, was, 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 he, he faced some, some major challenges, as you and I often face various challenges 
in our life. Um, and yet, uh, we, we, we see uh, this reminder here that we can be strong. We can be courageous. Why? Because God continues to go with us. He continues to send his spirit with us. And, you know, even though that, you know, the, the, the flat tire, you know, it's had a little bit of air, yet there's still air there. And we know we have the spirit if we have faith, even the faith like a mustard seed, the spirit is with us. Uh, this, the spirit is there because we can't have any kind of faith without the presence of the spirit. Um, but there's a difference between, you know, with those times that we're struggling and those times that we're filled with the spirit and, and trusting and recognizing God's presence in our life and how he's able to help us face those challenges uh, that come before us. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, we, we, we see that in... Uh, at Pentecost, you know, what were happening with the apostles right before that, you know, Jesus had, uh, you know, had, had died, you know, he, he had risen, but they were still a little bit afraid of what was going to happen, you know, and, and, and so there was a lot of, a, a lot of fear that the, the apostles had, but when they were filled with the spirit, it gave them courage and they went out and they began to proclaim that gospel message of salvation. And, uh, and why? Well, we hear those words of Peter in Acts 2 where he says, you know what, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And uh, that's, uh, that, that's a work of the Spirit in our heart. Let's go to the last verse here and read this together. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, first for the Jew and also for the Greek. From Romans 1.16, this also happens to be, be my confirmation verse as well. And uh, these are words of Paul that he's writing to the church in Rome. And Paul was not always the, the model Christian. Um, he was very dedicated to his religion, to his, to his Jewish faith, but he had a problem with change. And when Christ came, he didn't really recognize what God was doing there. He, he was very dedicated to what, what God had done in the past and, and believed very strongly in that. But when God was doing something in the present, he failed to recognize how God was at work there and was, was dwelling on that to the point where he was persecuting Christians. He was having Christians killed because he said, oh, you know, you're following this Jesus guy until finally Jesus confronted him on the road to Damascus and said, hey, Paul, why, why are you, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And uh, that's when uh, he finally realized that he was failing to see where God was at work today. And God continues to work today. Um, and he worked through Paul. And Paul went from being the biggest persecutor of the Christian church to becoming the, the greatest missionary uh, of the church. And so he went around planting churches all over and proclaiming that gospel message uh, very uh, zealously and, and, and unashamedly. Um, and even uh, as he writes to Rome, this isn't a church that he planted, but he, but he writes to this church in Rome and, and he, you know, he wants to go visit there as well. And, and I, I love this verse here. And it's, you know, it's right there in the first chapter as Paul is uh, kind of laying the foundation for why he's writing. And he, he, he's writing because he says, that this is the gospel. This gospel, is, it's not just words, but this is the gospel of Christ. This is the power of God for salvation. And as we, as we simply trust in, in God's salvation, uh, we, we have uh, that which we, which we believe. And, uh, you know, he said, this is for all people. This isn't just for the Jews, you know, yeah, the, the, this, you know, was rooted in, in the Jewish uh, tradition, but this was for all nations, that, uh, that, that, that God was there in the Jews to be a light for the Gentiles. And, and so Paul is, is very... Um, eager, as he says in the verse before that, he says uh, in verse 15, he says that he was eager to preach the gospel also in Rome because he recognizes the, 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 the Spirit's power in that. Um, and uh, he's not picky about who he, he preaches it to. He doesn't say, oh, this person, uh, you know, is, is not worthy of it or, oh, this person probably, had to, you know, won't listen to it. He says, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share it with everyone. He says, that, you know, the, the person who, who's a fool, the person who's wise, he's going to share that message at every opportunity. And that's what you and I are called to do is to, to share that message, not to be ashamed. And, and you know, sometimes we uh, maybe uh, are, are a little bit shy about talking about our faith. And, uh, and yet this verse reminds us to, to not be ashamed of that because this is God's power in that the spirit is at work as we share uh, God's word. 
you know, back in the Old Testament lesson from Numbers, you know, we see the spirit at work there and, you know, Moses had the spirit and then as others there were, were, you know, had the spirit as well. There were some saying, hey, you know, what's the deal? You know, we don't want everyone to have the spirit, right? And you know, Moses, no, we, we want everyone to. Um, that, that, that's a good thing. Um, and uh, in our gospel lesson, we're reminded there that the spirit is given to all who believe. And so we know that, like I said before, if we have faith even as small as a mustard seed, we know the spirit is present in our life. And uh, we, uh, uh, we, we, we don't really have any control over what the spirit does. Jesus talks about that, you know, and we sometimes miss the, the play on words between the word spirit and, and the word wind, you know, and Jesus talks about how, how the spirit blows where it will. We can't control what the spirit does, um, but what we can do is connect ourselves to those things that God has attached his spirit to, like his word. And uh, that's why the, the Israelites celebrated that giving of God's word and that's why we continue to focus on that gift of God's word uh, that he has given us. Um, and so we, we continue to recognize that work of the spirit in us. Uh, we recognize uh, how the spirit works in our heart, um, how through faith in, in our redeemer, we have forgiveness and that he continues to give us courage even in the face of difficult and challenging times. And we've had a lot of those, you know, especially the, 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 this uh, that this past year here, uh, but the spirit continues to work in us and the spirit continues to work in you. We see how the spirit worked through these various people like Joshua and David and Paul, and these were imperfect people and the spirit works in you as an imperfect person. And so may you recognize how the spirit continues to work in you, the power of salvation in the name of Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith before God and before one another with the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. Uh, it's good to see more people here today. Uh, I hope you feel good to be back in church. We're still taking the offerings at the door rather than passing a plate back and forth, so do look for that. Um, and as always, our offerings are ways of our worshiping God and, and supporting the work that he has for us. We continue with the offertory. More precious than silver Father, we give you thanks that you have put your spirit in us. 
From the day of our baptism on, we have been a temple of the Spirit. And we are thankful for everything that the Spirit has produced. From the faith that connects us to you, Jesus, to the defense of our faith against all the forces that would try to tear it away, to the ways you have shared with us your divine nature in shaping us to be more and more uh, like Christ, dear Father. To every time you have inspired in us true worship, true prayer, to every time you've worked through us to accomplish those things that you have prepared for us to do. Sometimes on the day of Pentecost, we can look at the strange and shocking events of that day and say, the Holy Spirit hasn't fallen on me, and yet it has. And Lord, we pray that you would prepare each of us for greater things, that you would give us even greater gifts, that the pain of this earth and the lack of the knowledge of the gospel would be removed from it because the Spirit's power rests on all your people everywhere. Heavenly Father, on this day, we pray for our nation. It is reeling from so many things. We pray for relief from the coronavirus, from the actual division that it causes amongst us, and from all the divisions that have made this nation tense and, and divided from political divisions to religious ones to racial ones. Lord, we pray that you would start with us, your people, that we would live in a way that honors you, that we would respect all people, that we would show love to all, that we would seek to meet their greatest needs. But we pray, Lord, for, for all who are citizens of this nation, and especially those with authority, that they would be wise in the things that they do. Lord, we pray for healing after another, this time very, very blatant, uh, police killing of a black person. We pray that there would be repentance and that people would come to grips with what they are capable of in the midst of having power and what sinful thoughts they harbor in their hearts. Lord, we also continue to pray for this congregation, for all the people in it, and for all the people who, who look to us to, to care for them. Lord, we pray for uh, Emma, who is hospitalized, and Pat, who is receiving hospice care. Pray for Carolyn, Pastor Curtis's aunt, who's having surgery today. We pray for the family and friends of Eldina Weisman and their grief at her passing. We pray for family members who may still be in harm's way or ill. And then, Lord, we pray that this congregation and all the people of it would be tools in your hands, that, that we would not be ashamed of the gospel in fact, that we would be presented with opportunities to share it and that we would eagerly and accurately by the gift of your spirit share your promise, share that power that changes lives. And Lord, while we are limited in what we can do because of the virus, Lord, may the spirit not be limited amongst us. And then, Lord, we pray... Um, for, for our confirmands, that you would protect them 
and uphold them, that you would keep them from ever falling from you, but rather keep them growing in their faith, that they would produce eternal fruit. And then finally, Lord, I give you thanks for the years that I've been able to serve this congregation, 20 of them. And I pray, O oh Lord, that, that my service has been pleasing in your sight and that there would be abundant fruit, fruit that would indeed follow me. All these things, Lord, we put before your throne. We trust your mercy, your wisdom, your power. That is why we ask. We pray them all in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and, sitting at your right hand, poured out this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this, the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. So therefore, with angels, and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord Jesus, and teach us to truly pray. Our Father, Our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come. Thy, thy will be done, done on, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took a cup after supper. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a New Testament in my blood, which is given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Today we will be once again using the continuous flow model and the prepackaged um, wafer and, and wine. Uh, if you haven't used those yet, uh, I will warn you, they're a little bit hard to get open. At least they are for me. And so the wafer is on the very top. You peel away the purple cellophane on the top and then the, the grape juice is, of course, in the cup, and there's a, a foil wrapper to remove to get that. As you come forward, take it. We're going to have the people on the south side of the sanctuary come forward first. Please uh, observe the distancing, and then we'll have the people on the north side. Take that communion um, elements back to your seat and, and open them there, and then the empty cup gets deposited in, in the uh, plates at the door when you leave. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.
only the body and blood of Christ given for you. Gosh, the body and blood of Christ. It's in the body and blood. Care for body and blood. Receive the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May it cover you and strengthen you in your faith, in your unity with him and with one another. Amen. Please stand for the post-communion canticle. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy. Shouts of thanksgiving. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
children with my blessing never alone waking sleeping I am with you you are my own in my love's baptismal river I have made you children with my blessing you are my own go my children sins forgiven at peace and pure here you learn how much I love you what I can cure story here you touched him saw his glory go my children sins forgiven at peace and pure go my children fed and nourished closer to me and love by serving joyful and free hear my spirit's power filled you hear his tender comfort stilled you go oh, my children fed and nourished and keep you and give you peace. I, the Lord, will smile upon you and give you peace. I, the Lord, will be your Father, Savior, Comforter, and Brother. Go, my children, I will keep you and give you peace. Please be seated. Uh, one thing I would like to announce, and this is a, really an ELS announcement, uh, they do have a golf scramble coming up for any of you who are golfers or any of you online who are golfers. It's on the 13th at Cambridge. And if you are interested in taking part in that, um, to email Joe probably. What's his email address? Do you know right off? Okay, jmitchell at els1.org. And I'd just like to say, you know, this is probably the biggest group we've had at eight so far. So nice to see a lot of your faces after not seeing you a while. And uh, um, hope you felt comfortable with our procedure. Uh, today, for the communion distribution, I decided I hadn't been wearing a mask, so I wore it like this, but I want you to see what it really looks like. <laughs> so. so that's the right way to wear <laughs> a classy piece of fashion accessory like, like this. May God bless your week. Mm.